Andrew Bolt has come to my attention again. This time because he has slammed the Liberal government uh, for making it illegal for Australian citizens, uh, most of whom in this case look Indian, to come back to Australia uh, because coronavirus has gone nuts over in India. All right then. Um, so, and he even said it sounds a bit racist to him. You know, I don't like to play the race card, he said, but this smacks of something racist. All right, now he's caused a stir, um, because normally he's accused of being racist, you see, and um, he's come out against racism, apparently, on this occasion. Now, he's done nothing of the sort, I think, um, uh, in essence. Uh, now, if, now, uh, there's a, he's caused a lot of bemusement and confusion and surprise, um, uh, yeah, because most people have him pegged as a damned conservative racist, you see. Uh, and here is him coming out against our conservative government, uh, the liberal government, um, for doing something racist. But, um, but that's not his dominant point. You know, he just said that as an afterthought. His dominant point is that they're Australian citizens and he's all for Australian citizens. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter what colour they are and all that sort of thing. Now, his dominant purpose in life is uh, to push the nationalist line. He's a nationalist. Um, <laughs> racism. Look, he's a nationalist. And if that makes him racist on a Wednesday and non-racist on a Thursday, the point is he's a nationalist. And he, he, um, he pushes the nationalist agenda, um, whatever that may trigger. You know, that might cause him to be racist on a Wednesday and anti-racist on a Thursday. But the point is he's not seeking to be racist or anti-racist or and he's not trying to avoid being racist or anti-racist either probably what he's all he's doing is being a true nationalist and um and um and that explains everything i think so people who are confused about the fact that he can be racist on a wednesday and anti-racist on a thursday you know because People are. They're making jokes about it and they're memes and all sorts of things. It's because, you know, these might be people who, for whom, your opinions on race define you. Uh, and, you know, whether you happen to be Labour or Liberal or Nationalist or Non Nationalist or Feminist or Non Feminist or anything, or anything else, the point is your utterances, you're defined by whether your utterances, utterances are racist or not. And it seems inconsistent to a person like that, uh, for whom your, you know, your uh, racism is uh, the key to defining a person. It seems inconsistent to a person like that if someone comes out as racist on a Wednesday and anti-racist on a Thursday. But it's not inconsistent. Um, it, it, well, it's inconsistent to a person for whom the race question is everything, is, is the most important thing. Uh, um, but it's not inconsistent if you consider that Andrew Bolt is being a true nationalist. And it's impossible for him to be a true anti-racist or a true racist if he's a true nationalist. Because nas being a nationalist pushes you into racist corners sometimes and anti-racist corners other times, as it has on this occasion. It's like, it's like if... Um, it's a, uh, um, it reminds me of uh, whether you're a true Labour, you know, a true bleeding heart lefty Labour person like I am. That, that too could make you a racist sometimes and an anti-racist other times. There's no avoiding, you can't get around it. Um, you know, Black Lives Matter, police and all that sort of stuff. I think, you know, like tomorrow, a policeman, um, um, you know, in Australia, acts like a policeman in America um, in Australia, the black deaths in custody happen not on the beat. So our crime against black people 
is um, after they get in jail. Whereas in America, they just shoot them straight away <laughs> on the beat, out on the street, you know. But um, imagine tomorrow an Australian policeman shoots a black person. Now, you know, to five years ago, I would never, never have made a podcast like this calling people black and white because it was out. You weren't allowed to then, or you shouldn't have then, uh, but now we're, we're asked to. Uh, oh, that's a whole other issue, you know. But black light, part of Black Lives Matter is to identify black and white. Right, now, um, now, if that happens, a true Labour person, a lefty, a proper lefty, a commie lefty, you know, that sort of lefty, um, if that happens, a policeman shoots a black man, a Labour person, a, a Labour left person, will be on the policeman's side until proven, until he's proven guilty. You know, and that's unlike the George Floyd case when, you know, we had the policeman proven guilty straight away. Really, in our minds, even I thought, you know, yeah, no, nah, that's murder and all that sort of stuff. You know, but to be a true Labour person, a policeman is a worker, and workers have rights. And that comes first. And if you say, and you might say that you might come out and say, "Hey, I'm not coming out against this policeman until he's been to court." Um, and neither should he be entirely sacked. He can be suspended. He shouldn't be sacked until this has been properly investigated. That's what you would say if you're a lefty in Australia, a Labor lefty, not a progressive lefty in the American Democrat sense, but a Labor lefty in the Australian left sense. Um, so in that way, I think, um, to be a true Labour person, you're pushed into racist corners sometimes, you know. Um, to be a true Labour person, you have to... Um, you're most likely to be all for Australian soldiers in our colonial past. You're most likely to be that. Yeah, and so on and so forth, yeah. This is what happens. Oh, I've got... To, that'll do.